<sighs> what in tarp nation? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I can't make a joke for the life of me. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the Blue Top Nation. This is episode 59 of the 40 and Slip, the We Got a Christmas Present Early episode. Old Tricky Dick, old Ricky Dyer, released uh, Bigfoot Spice, the Bigfoot with a Spice Girl haircut. I fucking love, I love this salon styled haircut Bigfoot that he released. This fucking thing, we could, I think we should just take it on tour for fucking laugh value alone maybe that's what he's doing the hair on that fucking bigfoot frames the face perfectly it's a lovely bigfoot i'm gonna put the picture up for everybody so that they can see it because this it's beautiful it's beautiful While putting the picture up we must make a disclaimer uh it does fall under fair use so if, okay. If there's any issues there, yeah, uh, it's I, a fair use photo because we're sure. making commentary and parody. I, it, it it's a fucking gorilla costume with a really nice hairdo. I yeah, it's uh, well something else. I, <laughs> I don't know what. The, <laughs> I'm tell. I don't. Like I told you earlier. <laughs> like I told you earlier, I'm like, it's like he's given up. He's not even trying anymore. <laughs> the fuck is this thing? And then I see this picture. There's this other pictures that are on. Um, and I want to give credit where credit's due. Um, is this Randy Filipovic's blog? Yeah, Bigfoot Evidence. Uh, no, Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot Tracker uh, or something. Yeah, Bigfoot Tracker News dot blogspot That's dot, it. dot com. Okay, so he's got these pictures here. Um. And it looks like the the Bigfoot's hanging upside down in amongst some trees. But it almost mm-hmm. looks like the Bigfoot face is in the tree. Now, Steve, I know this reference is going to go right over your fucking head. but They usually do. <clears throat> okay, for, for those of you that watch Game of Thrones, it looks like the fucking face in the tree in Game of Thrones. That's what this fucking picture looks like to me. Maybe he patterned it after that. I don't know, but that's what it fucking looks like to me. That's what the one where they're standing there and it's hanging upside down in between them. Now, the other one where it's leaned up against the the tree, the fallen down tree in the woods, that's the um, a freshly hair salon styled... Bigfoot, that's that picture with the nice frame. <laughs> it almost looks like a heart shape around the face. It just, hmm. And you Bing! know that Bigfoot has. What the hell was that? That was me, like making a sound, like you know. It just it it it, a, a it pops. Or something? No, it pops. Oh, it, it's it's got that that bing that. Ah. Oh, well, that's a better sound. I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. This Bigfoot seems to have one hell of a stylist, I guess. That's what I'm telling you. I don't know who does his Bigfoot's hair, but whoever it is, call that son of a bitch to get them working on a movie. <laughs> that is some beautiful the hair. hair. The hair is the only beautiful uh, part of that fucking thing. <laughs> that hair is it amazing. Like bought, it looks like he bought like the cheapest Bigfoot fucking co- or gorilla costume or whatever he could fucking <laughs> find. <laughs> it doesn't even look like he's got it fully stuffed. I mean, it's just slumped over. And the only nice part about it is the uh, the wig. 
I'm assuming it's a wig anyway. No, that's a that, uh, uh, listen, Steve. That is a a freshly <laughs> styled, quaffed, if you will, um, head of hair. It's, it's amazingly beautiful. I think you What's should. What's he calling this one? I think you should take a moment, Steve, to really appreciate. <laughs> I took too many the moments part. in my life. I think you should appreciate the part that goes down the middle of the fucking thing. What's it? <laughs> What's he calling this one, Chris? I lo- no, no, no. I love, <laughs> I love how the the Bigfoot costume is all matted and shitty. <laughs> well, it just was shot. That's what Bigfoots look like when they're dead mm. or dying. Uh, but under the picture, if you but they take some video, time but, before they you know lay down and do their hair. Apparently, oh. because it, I don't know if this this is when it was still dying, <coughs> because on the caption of the picture on Dyer's actual video, which I'm sure that's a screen grab from, uh, it says dying Bigfoot or something on the bottom, so it's still alive at that point. Oh, and then they hang it up in the tree. Oh. Allegedly alive. Some amazing hair. I can't get over it, Steve. I'm just... uh, Speechless, I guess. I I can't think of even what to say about this piece of shit. All right, so... I mean mean Bigfoot. No, 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 let's, let's, let's let's take a look back in time. Let's let's go back in time like John Teeter, Steve. Let's let's go back and let's let's go back to the beginning. It was what year did we see the freezer guts suit? That would be two thousand eight. In two thousand eight, we got freezer gut suit from Mister Dyer. Freezer gut suit. Uh, what was next? Uh, next, there was there was a photo I think he released in early two. It might have been a late 2011 or early 2012 of an alleged skunk ape, and then he claimed he was hoaxed with that one. But it was it was pretty bad. Okay, uh, that one I don't remember. After that, yeah, well, you you don't need to. It was pretty bad. Um, after that was. Where where he allegedly went to San Antonio behind the Home Depot and shot a Bigfoot, and wasn't that the one then, that he, he didn't that wind up going into having people fly out to California or somewhere? Oh uh, yeah, he, he flew Steve calls, or actually he didn't fly Steve calls out. Um, the guys from Facebook find Bigfoot flew Steve calls out to California and he, they were supposed to see a baby Bigfoot or I, I don't know the story is so fucking long and drawn out and uh, and Hank when did Hank and then Hank then Hank yes yes uh, Hank was made by a costume guy I can't remember where Oregon or something and uh yeah Fake from the view. I mean, you could tell it was uh, anybody who fell for that, and there were plenty. That was a. I mean, uh, why? That was just awful. I don't even know how to describe what Hank looked like. Well, we skipped over tent video. uh, Oh yeah, tent tent video video was when he allegedly shot the Bigfoot in San Antonio behind the Home Depot, in like an acre of woods where the Bigfoots tend to live down there and. Texas, because they don't have anywhere else to go, apparently. But the tent video came before Hank, and then he claims that Hank was a hoax because he doesn't have control of the actual body that he actually shot. So he still claims that he shot a Bigfoot in San Antonio, and now he's claiming Pennsylvania. So I love how I love how Bigfoot hoaxers like claim shit. And a week later, they claim that it's all different, or they claim that something got taken and is now missing that cannot vindicate them. I fucking, I love it. It's absolutely ridiculous. And people who buy into this bull, and people who buy into this bullshit, 
are ridiculous. Like my house was broken into and all my Bigfoot DNA samples were taken, except for this one that mysteriously reappears because I had it tested and it comes out 100% human, but that means Bigfoot because that's how things work in the, you know, when you look up DNA on Wikipedia. I'm just baffled apparently. that this is how it all ha always happens. It always happens that something gets stolen. Stolen or delayed somehow and then it never comes out and yeah it's, it's always that way and of course Rick Dyer originally in 2008 or after the 2008 hoax when he was one that was all said and done claimed that the body was taken by men in black and then of course that story changed eventually but I just <clears throat> want to know why he decided all of a sudden <clears throat> that Bigfoot needs to have beautiful hair <laughs> Because, because because up until now probably had a wig laying around. Up until now, Steve, all of his Bigfoot have not had this. They um, weren't well groomed. No, n I, we have never seen a head of hair on any of his Bigfoot hoaxes like this, and we know they're all hoaxes. So, ah. alleged. You know, oh, I've alleged. had some conversations with Hoaxes. yes, because I've had some conversations mm. with Mr. Dyer, and he gets really angry at me when I say he's a hoaxer. Oh, I, I allegedly alleged. took a shit today. <laughs> he says I should say alleged or possible or even probable, but I should not call him a hoaxer until he's proven in his latest hoax that it's a hoax. Oh. Whatever his latest hoax may be. I, I, you mean I can't just look at um, uh, Barbie doll haircut Bigfoot and know that it's not real? Oh, there's a besides the Spice Girls, there's somebody else. I'm thinking, <clears throat> oh, who who was it that had a haircut like that? I have no a famous singer. Fucking I, idea. I can't think right now. I just know it's that just it not does not look right. It looks wrong in every sense of the word. I was telling you before the show, is the gentlemen that are standing there with him in that photo are just as complicit in this hoax as he is, and there's no way of them to back out of this one. I mean, in the last hoax, the guys were able to back out by saying, well, they never actually got to touch the body, and or they, you know, they were hoaxed too, but those guys are standing there touching the motherfucker. These guys know it's a hoax this time. That's filled with polyfill, Steve. They're not sure. <laughs> well, yeah, because who knows what a Bigfoot really looks like. It could have, you know, fake-looking hair like that. That's right. They got they, The reason that it's so light is because they got hollow bones like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, according to Rick Dyer, they have a pouch where they carry their young. Jesus Christ. I'm not making that shit up. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Bigfoot's and marsupial. Two, two penises, I think. They both have, they all have two penises. No, I think this is a female Bigfoot, ju judging by the haircut. Uh, yeah, I, I, there's no other way to go with the haircut. If that's a male Bigfoot with a haircut like that, I, <clears throat> I you know... I question Although whether he is, I question whether or not he's gonna uh, lay the foundation for any of his genetic material to go anywhere. <laughs> this Bigfoot likes boy Bigfoots. He may. Um, well, he's calling it Miss, Mr. Miyagi, so it's got to be a male. Sweep the leg, Johnny. That's what I say. Fucking wax on, wax off. Hey. Finally, some movie references I get. Of, uh, I watched that movie. Yeah. No, everybody saw the fucking Karate Kid. That's not even fair, of Steve. They did. That's not even well, but, fair. I didn't see E.T. till like 2004. That's so, a long time to go without think? seeing E.T. <laughs> I got to give you that. I got to give you that, that you missed E.T. That's a big one. I even played the Atari ET game before I and ever ate the Reese's the Pieces the original Atari. <laughs> yes, I mean I did all that stuff and I knew what ET was, but but so assuming that I have seen the Karate Kid is probably not the best assumption. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hey, 
I don't know what his. I, I don't know what the end game is because that's you? that's that's the the thing. It's what it, what do they these people think that they're gonna eventually get? Like, do they think that they're gonna get a movie thing? Do they think that eventually somewhere down the road people are gonna go, oh, this guy just uh, created these stupid fucking ignorant nowhere hoaxes that weren't even uh, brilliant or even well thought out let's hire him for something i think in the end he wants a tv deal or something of that nature okay you know he wants somebody to follow him around with a camera a reality type show and he don't care if he's proven a hoaxer or not that's all part of the show you know what i mean so i think that's the end game for him it's got to be something of that nature because he always brags oh i was I had this contract with A&E or something like that, which I could never find any uh, evidence of, and neither could anybody else. But, you know, that's what he talks about when he talks to you privately is stuff like that. And he was trying to do a Bigfoot autopsy movie, just like the Alien autopsy movie, so that's another potential end game for him. I mean, he's got a lot of ideas of where he wants to go with this. Now... Do I want to get into that sick motherfucking brain? No. But that's probably what his end game is. It's all money. I just ha- I just have to understand. I just I just kind of want to understand, I guess, w- where these people think that they're going to take this. You know, it, like where it's going to wind up. It, do they think people are I mean, I know I've said many, many times that people are pretty stupid. By and far, people are pretty fucking stupid. Oh, yeah. But do they think that people are that stupid? Are people that stupid? Yes, they are that stupid, Chris. I, that's they the are. problem that I have, I guess. I, d- I guess Look I have a last. little bit more faith in humanity than I thought. I mean, people will eventually catch on, but... He's going to get a whole new crop of new people, and, you know, it, it's, it's the way it works. He, he did this one too soon. He should have waited another couple of years, just like he did between the 2008 and the 2012 hoaxes, because most of the people who were interested in it in 2012 weren't interested in 2008, so they had no clue about the 2008 hoax. And by the time they were hooked, it was too late, and they wanted to believe so bad that they were hooked for a long time. But... Eventually, he lost all his support. And I think that right. happens a lot, too. I think people people go all in with this shit, and then they're afraid to back off. Right. They, I guarantee they, that. They That's put themselves guess. behind these people, and then they go, oh, shit, you know, I, ooh, oh, ooh. But then they, what do they do? You know, you back out, you look like a, you're wishy-washy, you know, or do you stand behind them? And I think that ha- probably happens to a lot of people. In a lot of situations, not just, you know, Bigfoot or, or UFOs or anything like that. I mean, it happens in real life, too. <laughs> so it, it's just the way it is. I tend but to be really think, careful of what I'm supportive of. And well, reason, be, reason being is because, uh, you know, I, I, A, I don't believe fucking anything unless I can see it right in front of me. I just don't. Right. So... Uh, that allows me to be able to take a step back from this shit and not, you know, stand behind much now, of anything. What happens if you do ever see a Bigfoot, Chris? Then maybe things will change a little. But until then... <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's that's you know, true. Maybe things will change a little. But until then, and here's the thing too, unless I can get hard proof of that, that's still just a story. Right. And... Uh, a lot of people don't even believe what they saw themselves. So just like I'm guessing you would, you're skeptical of your own self, you know? Oh, yeah. I've had but, many experiences that I've been very skeptical of. And I've talked about a bunch yeah. of them. I've had ghost sightings and I've had UFO sightings and a <laughs> couple of hearings as well, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> so so I've heard. I've heard, I've heard all about your... Um, your supposed uh, um, hearings in the woods, but you you identify very well though. 
Steve, I want you to know that you're able to pinpoint identify what you're hearing, those hearings. Right. Um, very well. <laughs> but I can't say for certain that, let's say, the out of the four UFO sightings I've had, that any of them were alien spacecraft or anything out of the ordinary even. It's just out of the ordinary for me. And as, as well as the Thunderbird thing, it was out of the ordinary for me. But it could have been an ordinary bird, I suppose. You know, or the the sound that I heard in the woods that the only thing I could attribute it to at the time was nothing. But over time, I've thought that maybe it could be a Bigfoot. But I can't say that for certain. So I'm skeptical of what, I, what I've experienced even. so Yeah, I... When it comes to this shit... I, like I said, I have to I have to see it to be behind it a hundred percent. Like I can't just go out and boom, you know, put all my weight behind it. But when it comes to my experiences, the experiences that I've had, anytime I've relayed anything on this show or any of the other incarnations on this channel, <clears throat> it's always. I give you my experience. I tell you I don't know. And that is the way that it is. You can make, you know, it's fucking MK Davis time. You know, come to your own conclusions. I'm no fucking expert. Thank you for coming. I've never heard MK Davis say fucking. You get, you got a good point there. This is yeah. the uncensored. He's a nice man. MK He's Davis. Nice I don't know. I've never spoken to him. I like to make fun of him. No, neither have I. And but he's, yeah. I think that his videos are suspect. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's just like that. that's just right. me. Before I, knew, before I knew about the Bigfoot massacre theory at Bluff Creek, and I, I think that was probably blown way out of proportion when he proposed that idea or something similar to that idea. But my Steve, God. I have, I I actually have a theory. About you do? I have a theory about the Patterson Gimlet film, and I've okay, not shared sure. it. Go for it. I've not shared it with anybody. Are you gonna share it tonight? Uh, I don't think it was a massacre, Steve. No. I what? think it was a rape. Are you saying that? I think I'm saying that allegedly, allegedly, Bob Gimlin and Roger Patterson raped Patty, and what she's doing is taking the walk of shame through Bluff Creek. Well, I've met Bob Gimlin in person, uh, and I don't want to offend the uh, alleged Gimlin guard, <laughs> you know. So I'm gonna just take. I'm gonna bow out on that one. <laughs> Bob Gimlin's a, a hell of a nice man. I mean, you I look at see. how you look at how Patty looks over her shoulder. <laughs> That's some shame. I don't think it was <laughs> Bob or Roger that did it. It was probably somebody else. Bob Hieronymus, maybe. <laughs> maybe he was in the suit, but he wasn't. In. <laughs> Bob Hieronymus raped Patty <laughs> while in the out. Bigfoot suit. <laughs> no, wait. No, you know how Bob Hieronymus always says, "I was the man in the suit." Well, he wasn't technically <laughs> all the way in the suit. <laughs> Just only parts of him. See, we figured it out. This show is both informative. Hey. We're like a fucking well-oiled detective machine. Bob Hieronymus molested Patty. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I I just think that if you take a real good look at that footage, that definitely looks like a walk of shame. Could that be considered like? I won't even say it. I'll ask you off air. If but hey, if if that's the case, all right. If I'm right, Steve. And let's just take this a step further. Let's just say M.K. Davis is right. Does that mean? Does that mean that the Patterson Gimlin film is a snuff film? Hmm. Well, no. Doesn't a snuff film actually show show you know the act? Well, maybe we're missing some parts. Well, there is allegedly missing parts of that film. Ah. Would you believe folks like you know? MK and some of the others that have done some work on that film. You know, there's missing frames. <clears throat> yeah. But no. I don't think uh, uh, either of those gentlemen 
No, I fucking <clears throat> Christ on on a pony. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake, take a joke, I'm people. Gonna lose all my credibility now, Chris. Take a fucking joke. I'm done. I'm done in the Bigfoot community. Um, I, I, I just can't believe that we have these people throwing these hoaxes out, and it's again. This is why I decided to start this fucking show. Because, like I, I've said before, ninety, and I think we've gotten up to ninety-nine at this point, Steve. Are we at 99%? 99% so. of the shit we see is f just, it's it's lies and bullshit and hoaxes and crap. A lot of it's wishful, wishful thinking, too. <laughs> you know, you see something in the woods and you take the... Oh, yeah, there are people out there who so just... Yeah, who, who, who they get excited and they want to see something and... But 99% of the stuff that we see that's presented is shit. Because people want to pull one over. I don't understand why there's this big push to do this. I don't know either. I just... Attention... Money, fame, I don't know. There's not a lot of fame and Yeah, but if there was if there was a lot of fame in it I could understand it if there if there was a who, who would you say at this point in time is the most famous person in the Bigfoot community? And I'm not talking hoaxes or anything like that, but I would probably say the person who's been on T V the most or whatever, you know, like Doctor Meldrum. But if I go to work tomorrow and say, Hey, Doctor Meldrum said this they don't give a flying fuck because they have no clue who Dr. Meldrum is. You know, that kind of thing. Right. So what is in it for people who want to hoax a couple hundred people, basically, is what you're doing. Now, I have spoken to Rick Dyer privately, and his goal is not the Bigfoot community. He really doesn't care. He only does that for the fun. You know, he does all his hating on people in the Bigfoot community for the fun of it. His goal is the general public because they have no clue who he is. And that's where that's who he wants to fool. So when he comes out with a new whole new hoax like this, he's got a whole new audience every time because they don't know who he is, you know. And they're not smart enough, not that the general public isn't smart, but they don't go and do you know background searches on somebody. They're not going to type in Rick Dyer into the internet for the most part. So he's going to fool a whole new group of people. And I don't know, I think, you know, eventually he wants a TV show or whatever, but in the meantime, he's just having a good old fucking time messing with people. Yeah, I guess. I, I just, to me, I don't get, I don't get it and I don't get where it goes. I... Well, I know with the other popular hoaxer that's going around right now, he, uh, you know he's in it for money. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty transparent there. Yeah, 900000 Canadian dollars. I don't think he ever thought he was going to get 900000 Canadian dollars. But it does grab attention. And so, and that's what he's after, so that his documentary or whatever, you know. And just like I said, you know, with, I'll say his name, Todd Standing, he's smarter i think smarter than rick dyer to be honest with you his hoaxes aren't any better but he knows that if he grabs attention then he goes farther and farther and farther so it's all it's about is getting the attention and then eventually getting the money if there is any to be to be had i can tell you there's no money in bigfoot unless you're a hoaxer because you're going to get the youtube views that way and stuff like that yeah, the the money that can be made in bigfooting is, oof, you fucking non non existence for the most part, yeah. unless you're having a, a conference in South Africa that costs like uh, six thousand dollars. Yeah, that was pretty fucking outrageous, huh? Yeah, you were all upset about three hundred bucks, Chris. <laughs> so I think three hundred bucks <laughs> for what you got was fucking outrageous. Well, I think six grand is. For what you do, well, you get a plane ticket, and I know, bet you, meals. and and you know what, Steve, what I'll I'm bet you anything. You don't see those motherfuckers doing that again. 
Uh, well, we're not going to get into it, but I shouldn't have brought it. <laughs> hey, don't, you have, say, don't you have no, some fucking news? Money. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not going to there. Uh, uh, now you got me all flustered and flabbergasted. No, for no, tonight. I meant don't you have some fucking news? Like for tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, news for tonight? I wasn't putting you I'm on the spot, it. you fucking oh. jackass. I'm just a, I'm a fucking idiot. Play the music. Hey, thank, thanks for telling me how to produce the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like you needed some direction there. I don't know. I needed direction. I'm like, yeah, Steve, how about some news? No, no, we're not going to go into that. I thought you were saying something else. I kind of missed you. Yeah, I'll read the news now. Uh, I love this uh, story because it's about dogs again, Chris, and I know how you love your dogs. And oh, yeah, they're great. This guy, this little dog. Get a deaf this one. This little dog, he got lost. This one, <laughs> well, they can still bark, right? Deaf oh, dogs. yeah, they can bark, all right. Yeah. You have a deaf dog? Mm-hmm. How come I didn't know this? I have There's a, a lot of things about you I don't know. I have a deaf cocker spaniel. Huh. Hmm. Cool. All right, from sfgate.com. I, I think it's from San Francisco. I'm not sure, though. Hmm. Uh, bacon, a pet psychic, and uh, I think it was a rotisserie chicken. Turn up zilch and search for a lost dog. Uh, from Montpelier, Vermont. Rotisserie chicken. It was rotisserie chicken. Bacon, dog toys, more than a dozen volunteers, and even a psychic have not been enough to find Murphy an elusive golden retriever whose owner's five-month search for the beloved animal has captivated one mountainous area of Vermont. Uh, neighbor, neighbors have pulled together to find Murphy since he was spooked by a car accident and ran off June 29th, uh, going door-to-door -door with posters, looking for tracks, and setting out food traps. He's even been spotted numerous times in backyards, on trail cameras, about eight miles from the crash, but anytime someone gets close, the dog just runs away. Uh, I've lost my spot already, Chris. That's great. I do it all the time. It's, We're professional, it's Steve. Just a professional show. Anyway, uh, not according to everybody, but we'll try. That's true. Yeah. At one point, they even enlisted a Massachusetts-based pet psychic who claims to be able to communicate with animals. The psychic told them by phone... <laughs> the fucking psychic didn't even come out. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, the, Don't they have to, like, smoke? The dog's been missing oh, for no, five fucking dog. months. Yeah, they see it around. <laughs> it, 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 give up! The psychic, the, psychic, <laughs> the psychic said that Murphy was on a parallel path to a road where they had just lost track of him and that she was seeing his name. <laughs> of course, they still didn't find the dog. Yeah, of course, they fucking didn't find the dog. Ah, jeez. Murphy was spotted in August. Uh, one woman drove 30 miles from Burlington every night to help keep a lookout for him. Uh, but the psychic came up empty, and that's that story. Yeah, uh, yeah. Five months? I should think so. I, I guess he's been spotted on trail cams and stuff. I mean, so he's still alive. That's great. Around, that's good. He's, he's out having fun. Spooked. Murphy, Murphy the dog is spooked by a car accident. Hmm. I don't know if you heard the story about the uh, swastika wrapping paper that was in a Walgreens in the Hanukkah section. Um, I'm all, I'm all it about stores. it, Steve. It was. It didn't really, to me, look like swastika. I mean, it looked like swastikas, but it was just a design. And it just happened to have a symbol that kind of looked like a swastika, but it was in the Hanukkah section of the store. So, anyway, this is from Myster MysteriousUniverse.org. Raelians, the UFO cult. Uh, demand return of swastika wrapping paper. Uh, soon after Walgreens, the largest drugstore chain in the United States, pulled a line of Hanukkah wrapping paper from its stores after a shopper noticed a swastika in the design. Members of the Raelian movement demanded its return and defended the swastika as a holy symbol of peace. I think the Jews uh, should take those... it back. I think they should like <clears throat> really like embrace the swastika and just take it back. Like, get, take away Was its it power. Just to begin with? No, just take it back. Like, it, it, you know, make it theirs. 
Fuck well, the Nazis. We know that the, uh, well, we know that the swastika goes well, you know, as a symbol the way back. The swastika is a type. symbol of peace, for fuck's sake. People, get over right. it. It always has been. The, the, right. the, the symbol that people are associating this with is a perverted Nazi symbol. And that's the, that's right. the problem. It, the SWAT sticker was a symbol of peace. It's a cross. For, for God's sake, the Boy Scouts used it before the Nazi movement. You know, it the was a Boy Scouts are Nazis. There. No, they weren't. But they oh. used the SWAT sticker because before Hitler, it had no evil meaning behind it. But yeah. anyway, for those not familiar with the Raelian movement, movement, it's a UF. O religion whose uh, members believe that life on Earth was scientifically created by extraterrestrials. They refer to as the Elohim, a, he a Hebrew term that ironically means God. The Elohim are said to appear human, although when encountered they are mistaken for angels or gods. Moses, Jesus, Buddha, and others are believed to be prophets sent by the Elohim. As all offspring of an Elohim father and a human mother, uh, to provide guidance and direction. Hey, I wonder if Bigfoots are Elohims. I, I wonder if they meant that they were prophesizing the coming of um, Jeff Lynn. I don't know who Jeff Lynn is. Uh, ELO. Him? Yeah, him. <laughs> ELO, him? Yeah. This is talking about Jeff French Lynn. Auto racer. Oh, okay. French auto racer Claude Vorilhan. Vorilhan claims Because it's a living thing, Elohim. Steve. Yeah, I have no clue what you're saying. Uh, claims he met an Elohim in 1973 when it arrived in a UFO. Vorilhan do documented the visit, the book which tells the truth, uh, where he described that the Elohim uh, told him the creation story and what one looked like. Uh, it's, it was said to be an extraterrestrial human being. He was a little over four feet tall. Had looks like a dude. Hair, He's got sunglasses or dark glasses on. He plays a guitar. Almond-shaped eyes, olive skin, and exuded, ex exuded harmony and humor. Oh, so it was a funny Elohim. <sighs> Riding a wave on. on the crest of a wave, it's like magic. I'm going to get in trouble by the Raelians because I can't even pronounce their leader's name. Rolling and riding and slipping and sliding, it's magic. It's standing in the Raelian community. <laughs> anyway, the dude changed his name to Rael and founded the church whose 700 or 70,000 plus members support genetic engineering, human cloning, liberal sexuality, and the swastika, which was embedded in the movement's original symbol. Whew. That was a long story. It was a it's short a story, living thing! <laughs> My favorite story of the night, Chris. Yeah. I couldn't pass this one up. I had to do it. It's so cool. From And I believe it. Metro.co.uk John, Paul, George, and Ringo didn't exist. This goes along with the Jeff Lynn thing. Ah, uh, I still don't know who Jeff Lynn is. The Beatles never actually existed, or so says a group of conspiracy theorists who have come up with several reasons why. Uh, first of all, they suggest that the height of the Beatles fluctuates over the years. Then there's the eyebrows. They change shape, size, and style over the years, according to the Beatles. Uh, as according to the Beatles, as they were as they were presented to us, never existed. I have no clue. According to the Beatles. Yes, Not according to the Beatles, we changed over the years. Oh, the, I think it's the name of a uh, book or something. The Beatles never existed. Is, yeah. Ah, according yes. The Beatles. Uh, <laughs> those two subjects are covered in great deal on the Conspiracy Theorist website, but there is more evidence coming soon. The theories... Uh, theorists state, we are here to explore whether the original individuals themselves ever existed, and if so, what may have happened to them and by whom, but have not been able thus far to calculate how many of each persona were fraudulently presented to the world. Uh, the website also claims that the, <laughs> the ears of the Beatles changes shape and size, even position on the head. 
Uh, by the way, they all have teeth. That's not unusual. But <laughs> they all, that, yes, they them. all have teeth, people. That's it's so they amazing. Were from the UK. <laughs> they were from the UK, Chris. Oh yes, that's right too. I forgot the British and their dentistry. <laughs> Uh, that's not unusual, but it's claimed the size and shape of the teeth uh, have changed over time, too. I wonder what Paul has to say, say about this. How many Beatles are still alive, Chris? Paul and Ringo. Paul, right? Paul and Ringo? Ringo's still alive? Ringo is still around. Ringo will be the last <laughs> one to go. See, the uh, 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 Jay Moore, <clears throat> comedian Jay Moore said it best once. He said, the Beatles are dying in order of coolness. <laughs> so you're saying Ringo was the least cool? Um, I'm saying Ring Ringo. I, I'm like saying that. Ringo's going last. Look what he did that one PBS children's show. It's really bad. Hey, train I don't know what to think of Ringo. This has been which, which Ringo episode. 59 of the 40 and slip no i do not believe that fucking roger patterson and bob gimlin raped patty it was a joke people no i make them wait to the end yeah but nobody listens to the end yeah people don't know i was joking they can go fuck themselves if you like this shit hit the like button if you don't hit the fucking thumbs down button subscribe say something nice it tickles the cockles of my heart did i ever tell you i'm the fifth beetle no that was eddie murphy um i have no, seen I no i've seen the saturday night live episode and it was eddie murphy <laughs>